Today I'm going to be talking a bit about and giving a brief review of the Fuji GF35-70 kit zoom uh, after about a month of use. So earlier this year Fuji released this very practical lens for the GFX system. It is in some sense a kit zoom in name only because the optical quality is really good. It does make some compromises in terms of max aperture, variable aperture, extending non-internal focus, etc. But the optical quality is actually really impressive. It's a pretty small and really lightweight lens, especially considering that it's for medium format. And I think that if you have the option to buy one for the kit price, you should absolutely buy one. Even at full price, I think it's a good option. And I'm going to be talking about the pluses of the lens, the minuses, and then also I'll give some comparisons to the 32-64 f4 Pro Zoom, the 50 3.5 Pancake, and the 45 2.8. This is going to be a non-technical review, so all the photos are edited to taste. I also like to use diffusion filters in my work, so you will see a glimmer glass filter effect, but if you're looking for a technical review, this is definitely not the place. Also, I'm going to talk a little bit about my experience using a zoom after using primes almost exclusively for quite a long time. Features of the lens, so it's a small, light zoom lens. The only lens for the GFX that's lighter at the time of making this video is the Pancake, the 53.5, and that is only about 50 grams or 2 ounces lighter. It's also smaller than the vast majority of the GF lenses, but about the same size, for instance, as the 45 2.8. So let's get into the pluses. I think the biggest one that stands out to me is the image quality and sharpness specifically is what I tend to be overly focused on. So I'll link below an article from Jim Casson where he compares the performance of this at various apertures to the 32 to 64 and this lens is actually basically just as sharp once you stop down to f8 which is crazy. I've already talked about the size and weight which are great and I will say this lens is built with the same materials and has the same water resistance as other GFX lenses. However, because of the non-internal focus and the lightweight, it tends to feel a little bit cheaper. Finally, the cost. The cost is great. 500 as a kit or 1,000 separately are both very competitive prices. Let's get into the cons. I guess I should say first off that the corners aren't perfect, period, although they're very good stop down and wide open, they definitely aren't perfect at all. That said, for me, as someone who's obsessed with sharpness, I'm content to use it wide open and so I suspect that if you are less fixated on that than I am, you will also be content with it. It's also variable aperture. If you're shooting in low light, it's going to be a bit of a pain as the aperture shifts around on you, and also its max aperture is somewhere between 4.5 and 5.6, which is honestly really slow. I don't think this is a great choice of an only lens to have. I think that if this is your only lens you have for your GFX, you're going to feel a little bit limited. I think you want to pair it with something faster. If you're okay with something a little more telephoto, slash you want something for portraits, maybe you could get the 81.7 or the 110.2. If you want something more general purpose, but faster, the 45 2.8 is awesome. It also doesn't have an aperture ring. Personally, I tend to find myself bumping into the aperture rings on the Fuji GF lenses, so I typically just use the command dials. Heresy. You do have to extend the lens before you shoot it. I wasn't sure how much this would bother me. Personally, it feels fine when I go out to shoot, I extend it. When I'm done shooting for a bit, I sometimes retract it, or just leave it extended fine either way. As I've mentioned, it's also not an internal focus lens, so it will change length as you shoot it. Again, feels a little bit jankier, but given the size savings, I think it's very worth it. It's a stepping motor, not a linear motor. I haven't encountered any focus speed issues, and it's not loud, but ideally it would have a linear motor. I also haven't tested it basically at all for video, 
so sometimes the linear motor lenses work better for video, are more reliable in focusing than the stepping motor ones. Finally, let's get into some comparisons. So first up, the 3264 Pro Zoom. Obviously, the 35 to 70 is smaller, lighter, literally less than half the price. It lacks the linear motor, so focus theoretically should be a little slower, and video focus is probably a bit worse, but I haven't compared them directly. And so if you need the speed, or you need to shoot wide open a lot, or you're shooting portraits and you want to blur the background, obviously take the 32 to 64. Otherwise, I think the 35 to 70 is great. Compared to the 50 millimeter quote pancake, the 35 to 70, especially once it's extended, is a little bit larger. And it is less sharp at equivalent apertures, but if you're shooting at f8 or especially f11, there's going to be very little difference. And of course, it's a zoom. So if you want one lens that's really easy that can shoot a bunch of different focal lengths, then take the zoom and the other compromise aren't that important. Finally, let's compare it to the 45 2.8. I realize this is a little weird because we're comparing a pro fast-ish prime to a kit zoom. If I were going to choose between a general purpose lens, these would probably be the two biggest contenders for me. The 45 2.8 will be noticeably sharper at 4.5 to 5.6 and marginally sharper at f8. It's also a little more contrasty. Of course, the 45 does f2.8, which is great for lower light, and I find the 45 very workable for portrait work as well, versus the kit zoom is really only good for portraits in a pinch, in my opinion. The 45 feels more dense and substantial, even though it doesn't weigh that much more. But again, the 35 to 70 is a zoom, and you really don't give up that much to get a zoom, so I think there's a solid case to be made for getting it. So to go on a little bit of a tangent, I just want to talk a bit about shooting zooms. If you're like me and you shoot a fair bit of film, you probably are pretty used to shooting prime lenses because before the last, I don't know, 10-ish years, zooms tended to be kind of bad. What I'd say is that nowadays, optical designs have gotten more advanced, zooms have gotten better, primes have gotten better too, but zooms have gotten way, way better. And so shooting with a zoom isn't really that much of a compromise anymore. And Shooting with a zoom just feels different. I think a common way and what I do to shoot with zooms is I start on the wide end and then sort of zoom in and recompose to get the framing right. Versus with a prime, I tend to pre-visualize. I know approximately what the frame is going to look like and I look around and see how, how I can place the frame. And of course, if I'm not feeling lazy, I'll also walk forward and back to zoom with my feet. One nice thing about a zoom is that you can grab more views from one place, so if you're lazy and you don't feel like walking around, and I don't know about you, but personally, when I see an image, I oftentimes want to just point the camera, get the composition right, and snap. I don't want to have to cross the street, walk up the block, whatever, to get the right image. So with the zoom, I can snap a wide view, zoom in a bit, and snap two or three or four different photos, and then pick later which one I prefer. And in some sense, the wide end of the zoom becomes a tool to help you pre-visualize your shot and then you zoom in to get the composition that you want. If you haven't shot a zoom in a while, I'd recommend giving it a shot. It might expand your mind a bit or throw a wrench in your creative process. And a little bit of context on where I shot these images. So these were in West Berkeley, so you probably heard of Berkeley. It's the same city as the school. And West Berkeley, where I shot these, is a couple miles from the school. It's a more residential, semi-suburban area. A lot of mixed use, commercial mixed in with residential, even a bit of industrial that's slowly getting converted to breweries, wineries, etc. I like West Berkeley because of all the variety, all the older buildings, their buildings that are, you know, not perfectly manicured, not super new. There are a lot of native plants. 
there are trees everywhere people or the city or both i don't know love trees unlike say sf there's little cloud cover you get beautiful golden hour light every night for better or worse because it's mostly single family with some two-story apartment buildings you can actually enjoy that late golden hour light you don't get it blocked out by tall buildings so hey you've made it to the end of the video my opinion on the lens well as you can tell i really like it Yes, it has a couple compromises. Fortunately, optical quality is not one of those. In conclusion, I'm really impressed with this lens, especially considering the cost. The optical quality at landscape apertures is wonderful. It's not fast, it's variable aperture. It's not internal focus. It's not linear motor. It makes a bunch of small compromises that I think are acceptable in a kit zoom. And in return, you get a super small light lens that you can walk around with all day and grab beautifully high quality images. To me, it's very special that you can capture images that you would have needed at the bare minimum a medium format camera on a tripod 20 years ago with a handheld, tiny, relatively lightweight system. Okay, tiny is lying, but not that big. As always, all the photos, video, music in this video are licensed under Creative Commons, so feel free to reuse them. And I do welcome your thoughts down below. If you have some opinions or helpful advice, I post these videos about once a month, typically at the end of the month because I'm kind of lazy. And otherwise, thanks for watching. Really appreciate it. And I will um, see you next month.